At this stage, uh, <clears throat> as soon as the cartridge is inserted in the instrument, uh, the, the instrument prompts to uh, uh, calibrate the cartridge. Uh, but if it does not, uh, and the cartridge has already been calibrated, uh, this is where you go under the tools, recalibrate. So recalibration of the cartridge basically uh, it picks up the solution uh, from the uh, <coughs> alignment marker, which is the uh, 20 uh, and the 1000 base pair lower and upper markers. It will calibrate and it will, the software, show the two peaks uh, individually run. Uh, after that, we proceed to uh, the uh, run of the DNA ladder. To run the DNA ladder, uh, we basically, <coughs> as we have loaded the samples uh, in the positions, in this case, uh, <coughs> uh, as you can see on the user interface, uh, the sequence basically is to generate number of methods to run your samples. So it's very simple. It's a very simple. You uh, uh, click the button Add and it will add a line uh, in the sequence uh, table. Uh, the first thing you will do is basically designate the sample. Uh, <clears throat> of course, in our case, is an A1, position A1. Uh, but if you have some other samples, let's say you want to run a row of PCR products, uh, if you have a 12-well strip, you will select the 12-well strip uh, by hitting the A. Uh, or if you want to go uh, A to H, uh, putting eight sample runs, uh, it will select uh, A to H. Again, on this, in this case, we are using A, so we will select A. Uh, and if you want to use a 96 well uh, sample tray, you would of course uh, select all the positions uh, as designated. Uh, so again, we select A1, and we say OK. Uh, and also you have a table here uh, which you basically enter uh, the name of each sample position or you can basically export uh, or import uh, from your Excel spreadsheet into this table uh, all the 96 well sample uh, uh, names and it, the software will recognize it. Uh, once you have selected sample position then you need to select a method, which method you're going to run. Uh, basically, the software uh, already recognizes uh, through the, uh, when you uh, lash the cartridge, uh, there is an RFID buildup in the cartridge and it will display what type of a cartridge it is. Uh, by recognizing the information stored in the RFID chip, it will say it's an S1 cartridge, uh, has an expiration date, uh, which is typically six months expiration. Uh, stored at room temperature uh, and also the number of runs left uh, and also the description of the cartridge which is in this case it's a high resolution cartridge. Uh, so again to select a method, uh, the methods are basically picked up by the RFID chip for this particular cartridge which is an S1 cartridge and it will say uh, what kind of resolution, what kind of speed, what kind of voltages you want to run. Typically you choose the first one. Uh, first one is a uh, M4 method uh, and it will run a separation at 6 kV for 300 seconds uh, and sample injection would be 4 kV at 10 seconds and this will for an S1 cartridge, it will resolve uh, uh, two to four base pair resolution. So you will select this, say OK, and also you would put some sort of a name for your run. So for this one, I will say ladder uh, one, and we're ready to go. And then we will hit the run. <coughs> And uh, as you hear, the instrument is going through some positioning right now. Uh, it's basically every uh, five minutes, the instrument automatically align the tray uh, and put it in the park position to be able to uh, uh, secure the cartridge tip or protect the cartridge tip from drying out.
if you forget to put it in the park position. So, okay, now we are ready. So I'm gonna hit the run. And uh, as you can see in the user interface, it positions uh, A1. This is the part that we selected and it's pointing it uh, red color. Of course, uh, once the run is completed, it will turn to uh, green and the rest of them uh, so on. So, so right now the instrument is basically going through the cycle, uh, steps of uh, doing cleaning. Uh, basically cleaning will be done through the 60 second purging of the cartridge. Uh, and we provide a status for the cartridge on the bottom. Basically, we display at the uh, uh, we are doing a high voltage purge uh, for 60 seconds, and we decrement the uh, seconds. We also display the current, which is very uh, uh, good diagnostic information as far as uh, how the system is performing. Uh, typically, for 6 kV separation, uh, a high voltage purge will display around between 12 to 15 microamps of current. And we also display the uh, background counts, the raw counts, uh, which in this case is around 1600, uh, uh, 1600 uh, counts. Uh, the overall, the PMT for the multiplier tube uh, or the detector saturates at 64,000 counts. Uh, so 1600, typically uh, a background noise for a brand new cartridge could be anywhere from 1500 all the way to 6000 counts as a background. So now the next steps are of course uh, within the method are dipping. Uh, it goes into the wa wa water solution, it dips, it goes to the wash uh, and it cleans the tip. And at this stage it goes to the alignment marker which was positioned at MA1 MA position and it's doing a sample injection which is around 4 kV, 10 seconds of uh, DNA ladder injection. I'm sorry, not DNA ladder, it's the uh, alignment marker, the 20 and the 1000. And then once that step is done, it goes into the sample which was positioned at A1 and it will inject, again, uh, uh, it's a staggered injection, uh, 4 kV, 10 seconds. And what we are displaying here is background noise in red and also the current. So once this is accomplished, uh, these steps, and then it will automatically, uh, the instrument will take the uh, uh, buffer tray underneath the cartridge and the separation uh, will start. Uh, this particular separation is 300 seconds. Uh, so within 300 seconds, uh, we will see the results. So I'm going to expand the window so you can see it better. So we initially inject some artificial noise, a uh, few seconds of artificial noise into the background baseline to make sure the PMT is functioning. Uh, and also you can see a kind of a curved picture or curved graph of the current uh, which is displayed. And uh, we also on the status bar we display the current which for this particular method it starts off around 25 microamp and typically this uh, uh, curvature of uh, it will stabilize and it will be a, a, a straight line uh, at somewhere around uh, 18 to 20 microamps of current. And once the electrophorogram uh, uh, shows up then we will completely remove the current uh, so you can see now we got some baseline noise and we are doing the separation. So we just passed the uh, one minute mark and for this particular method uh, running the PBR322 uh, the first peak which is the 20 base pair uh, should come out somewhere around two minutes uh, at this region. Uh, of course, before the two minutes uh, of the uh, uh, 20 base pair uh, marker, we will have some uh, <coughs> other peaks, additional peaks, which is the primer dimer. <coughs> Those peaks, and this 
tall peak is basically is the 20 base pair. Uh, so now it follows uh, with the rest of the peaks, uh, which are the PBR322. Uh, and hopefully uh, this uh, uh, separation will be done in less than 300 seconds. Uh, we also, in the uh, uh, user interface, uh, we have this slider in here, uh, which we can basically shorten by dragging the slider and uh, uh, hitting the button. We can either stop uh, the run uh, or we can extend the run, depending on the uh, number of peaks that come out. If we don't want to wait the 300 seconds or we want to extend the time, we can also extend on the positive or negative direction. So, electrofer, let's go back to the electrofurogram. Uh, anyway, these are the DNA fragments which uh, you will see after the run. Uh, <clears throat> We will do the calculation to do the accurate size scaling of each peak. Uh, this particular region uh, is uh, the two uh, is actually the four base pair resolution, which I will expand the table once uh, the complete electrophorogram is done. Uh, so we are almost uh, two thirds uh, finished, and we still have around 90 seconds left. So most probably once the last peak comes out, which is the thousand base pair, I will uh, stop the method, uh, uh, not completing the whole run. So <clears throat> we're almost there at uh, close to four minutes. And now we should have, this is the uh, uh, thousand base pair, and you can see it finished at four minutes. So I'll let it go a little bit more, and then uh, we still have around 50 seconds left. So to really uh, uh, stop the method, what I will do is basically move the slider toward the negative and say OK and that would basically finish the run and as you can see uh, the complete uh, electrophorogram is shown and also the gel view and the software automatically identified the, the lower and upper marker the 20 uh, and the thousand and it puts a green arrow on top of it uh, <clears throat> to do the uh, size calling we basically go here under the tools uh, and we say calculate. Uh, now we have a, already, uh, uh, we have to load the table. For this specific uh, run, we have to load it uh, for the cartridge S1. So we will select the S1. at 20k and 1k with 6k separation I will select that open and I will check mark the save after the calibration after the calculation and then I hit the OK and it will automatically calculate uh, the number of uh, uh, or, or calculate the uh, base for each peak and you can see uh, it already calculated uh, sizes uh, 621 here lower mark upper marker of 1000 lower marker of 20 and then you can see this is the uh, actual four base pair separation uh, here it says 230 234 so this is it now after doing the ladder run you're ready to uh, uh, put your PCR product and follow the same steps. Thank you.